Alright, my name's Chris and in this video I'm going to explain to you how the WordPress dashboard works and how you can actually leverage all the power of the WordPress content management system. So let's start by logging in to the back end of our website and for this video I'm going to use Tal Gur and I's website, the Online Business Challenge, and use that as an example. So the first thing you do is you type in your URL or just navigate to your site and if you don't have a website there yet that's fine you'll see like a um, you know a basic WordPress install or uh, after you've installed WordPress uh, the default WordPress theme which is currently 2013 will be there but in this case we already have a functioning website here so you just add on to the end of the URL up here in the URL bar wp-admin hit enter and you type in your username, password, log in. All right, so we're just going to kind of work our way down the menu here on the left side of the WordPress dashboard and go over what all this stuff means. We do have a couple of custom plugins installed, so some you may not see these some of these menu items or your theme like for example we're using the canvas theme here which gives us a bunch of options. So just keep in mind your dashboard may look a little different, but in this video we're just going to cover the ones that are on every WordPress install. So let's start up here with posts. So you can look at the posts you've written. These are blog posts or you can add a new one. So let's look at what a new blog post looks like. So this is the screen where you create a blog post. This area here is called the visual editor or the WYSIWYG editor. And this is where you create the content for your post. Right in here, this is where you title it. And that's really all you need to get started. You could just start typing, and this would create a new blog post. You can insert an image by pressing this button. Uh, but we're not going to go into how to actually blog and write pages in this video, but just keep in mind that that's what posts are all about. And you know, after you're done creating your post, you just hit publish over here, and your post will be live. So, categories are basically ways of organizing your blog post content. So, you can plan this in advance and create categories like uh, business tips, a slug is just a a URL friendly version so it's just all lowercase and has a dash in it click add new category and you can see now we have this business tips category I'm just gonna go back to posts here add new and let's say we're writing a post here and you can see our business tips category is here so we could check that off and that way when this post goes live uh, there'll be a link, a category link, or we could link to that category. So everything that's in that category will come up in like a blog search. So that's what categories are all about. There's also tags, which are kind of like a more detailed view of a category, for example. So let's say we wrote something in, we thought it was a business tip kind of category, but it was actually like a marketing strategy so we could tag this post as a marketing strategy and we could do that from right there and you can see right here that this post is now tagged with marketing strategy and just like comments uh, if you ever wanted to link to all everything that you did that tagged was tagged with marketing strategy uh, you could do that so over here where you see tags it's kind of the same thing as categories you can add tags uh, here but most people actually create tags and categories from inside the editor alright the other thing is the media library so in here this is where all of your images are stored and you can also upload zip files and audio files and even video into your media library so this is kind of where WordPress stores all that media content outside of the text you write on a page and if we go back to our post add new when you click on this add media button 
you can upload something or you can grab something that's already existing in your media library. So that's just a quick snapshot of what this menu item uh, media library means so that when it comes time to start creating content and really building out your site pages and blog posts, you know where all that's going and if you need to access that stuff, it's inside your media library. Pages are a lot like posts. Uh, if I were to click on add new here, the page is going to look really similar. One thing you'll notice is that the categories and tags are not here. That's something that uh, mostly just happens with posts, which are, you know, like news items delivered over time, whereas pages are more like static content, like your about page, your contact page, and so on. So once you ma master the WordPress editor uh, for posts, it'll be the same as pages. It's just a different type of content on the website in the sense that it's not like, a, you know, a news feed with a date attached to it. It's a static page. So comments is right here. We actually have um, comments turned off. We're not using the blog functionality. You don't have to use a blog and create posts when you use WordPress. It works great as a content management system for just a regular website. That's a common misconception uh, that you have to blog if you use WordPress. So we only just have this one default comment that came with the install, but for example, if we got a comment that we didn't want, we could mark it as spam, put it in the trash, or you know, approve it so that it goes live on the website under the blog post or the page that somebody commented on. So that's what comments are all about. A lot of this stuff right here is kind of custom. Uh, just to give you a quick idea, when you install a theme, sometimes themes come with uh, different options so that you can quickly adjust the look and the layout of your site without necessarily understanding code. So this is, we're using the canvas theme, which is made by Woo Themes. So for example, let's look at styling and layout and go to something like posts and pages. And you can see here within this canvas theme options, we can actually control the fonts. Look at all these fonts. This, these are pulling the uh, from the Google Web Fonts Library that we could make the page titles Helvetica, bold, we can change the color if we want to, and so on, and the size. So this is just an example of what's possible with this theme in the theme options under the uh, canvas theme uh, menu item here. So appearance is a great one. I'm going to just click on the parent uh, appearance item here, and you can see uh, we are running the Canvas WordPress theme. Uh, we also put on a, another premium theme called the One Pager that we decided not to use. And these two over here are the 2013 and the 2011 theme. These themes come with WordPress by default when you first install it. So if you're wanting to um, not purchase a theme and just and use a free theme, I actually recommend using uh, the WordPress default themes. They're both great. These two are pretty different. Uh, WordPress every six months to a year or so releases a new theme. So uh, anyways, that's this is where you would switch out themes or if you buy a premium theme you would press this install themes button and upload it from here. So that's appearance themes. You can go to customize here and this is where you can kind of set some basic settings. This is going to look different uh, depending upon which theme you're using. You can see uh, what our site title is. This is important for search engine optimization and the tagline. So that's just a real quick look at the appearance customize option. Widgets is a great area different themes. I'm going to go ahead and press up here and then visit site so that I can see the front end of the website. Um, 
the themes come with different widget areas. We're not really using a lot of them on this theme. Let me uh yeah, we're just we're just not really using widget areas. So I'm gonna pull up Tal site passively free. and show you some widget areas in action. Uh, right here, I can see at the bottom, he's using a footer widget area here. And let me go over to his blog. And it looks like he's using the same, uh, just using this one footer widget. I'm gonna, I'm gonna head over to unconventional parents. and click on the blog and show you uh, some more widget areas in action. So this is a, the sidebar and I'm using a hybrid connect opt-in form widget here, a video in a, in a widget, some links, I've got some images, a box with text, more text and images, images that link, a Facebook like box, and the categories for my blog. And you can see down here in the footer widgets, I've got some videos and some text. So jumping back over here, if we look at the back end of the online business challenge.com, you can see a primary widget area and a secondary widget area and the, the footer widget area and we're not really going to go into detail of like what every single widget does and how you can use them but let's say uh, we wanted to you know put a you know some text at the bottom of our site what we would do is we would we've got four columns at the bottom of the site we would drag this text widget over here type some words in here, give it a title, testing the footer widget, I'm going to click save, head over here, hit refresh, and I guess we don't have our theme set up to display the widget but it would show up like right over here in footer one, footer two, footer three, footer four. So we put a text wi widget in footer one. Uh, with this particular theme, we don't have it set up to display the footer widgets. So that widgets are just a quick way to add different types of content to various blocks on your site. So that's what widgets are all about. And the menus. You can see let's see here. Top menu is the one we're using. So you can see home challenges about contact in our website. You see here home challenges about contact. And that's how we decide you know what items go on the menu if we want to make a drop down item if we wanted challenges to go under home as a drop down we just do that but that's what the menus are um, this widget areas is some custom stuff I put on the site the editor you do, really don't want to go there unless you have a handle on code and how to code and program plugins let's look at installed plugins you can see we've added some functionality to our site by adding some plugins. So plugins are basically little packages of code that do different things from a functionality perspective or a design perspective. And just as one example, this Akismet plugin is the plugin that prevents spam 
you know, 99% of spam from making it on our website uh, in, in blog comments. So that's what Akismet is, and that's a plugin. Users over here is where, let's say you wanted to get, you were going to hire a freelance developer like myself or Tal to work on your site. Uh, web designers like us will often be given a set of logins so that we have our own logins to your site and aren't using yours. So you could just add a new user and that's how you would do that. These tools you don't really need to get much into. These settings are important. Uh, the general settings, let's take a look at those. This is where you can also enter the site title and tagline. Uh, you can make sure that this email address is where you want emails to go to let you know that like someone has commented on your site or a new user has registered. And that's really it for general settings. Uh, another main one is this reading tab. So you can see we've selected our website's front page to be a static page. We don't want it to be a blog. And you can see the post page, which would be the blog. Uh, we haven't selected anything because we're not using a blog on this website. So that's an important setting. And this permalinks is a good one. Pretty much 95% of the time you're just going to want to select post name here and this just creates the default URL structure for when you create a new post or page. By default WordPress comes on this day and time uh, setting here so it adds the year, uh, the month and the day and then the name of the post or page uh, by default but most of the time you're going to want to do post name. This helps keep your URL shorter and a little more easier to remember if you ever have to tell someone go to the onlinebusinesschallenge.com slash challenges um, it's just easier for them to remember so go ahead and set your permalinks that way and I'm going to head back to our dashboard and over here uh, these are all custom Plug it. These menu items are a result of custom plugins we've added for search engine optimization, building opt-in forms, and creating different kinds of links, kind of more in a more custom way. So that's what these are about, and that is the quick tour and an explanation of your WordPress dashboard. Um.